When I was a teenager, somebody gave me a copy of a book written by Richard Bach called Illusions. How many of you know the book Illusions? Jonathan Livingston Siegel? Okay. The book is about a, a reluctant messiah named David Shimoto, who is a Japanese airplane mechanic. And he flies crop dusting planes for a living. And a Messiah handbook drops out of the sky in front of David. And he finds out that he is called to be a Messiah. Now, I want to just tell you, when I was a teenager, a Christian teenager, reading that book, I thought it was sacrilegious. I did. I thought it was poking fun at God just a little bit. But it's a Japanese airplane mechanic. And every time he opens up the... Messiah handbook, the book just falls open right to the thing that he needs to read so he can learn how to be the Messiah that he doesn't really want to be. Are you with me? He opens up the book and it might tell him something like, you're only limited by your imagination. If you can see it, you can be it. Or maybe he'll flip the book open and it'll say something like, there is no no in the universe unless you create it. There's only a yes. Or, or maybe he'd flip it and it might say something like, you think somebody else is supposed to do it, but baby, it's your job. <laughs> At the very beginning of the book, there's a parable, a handwritten parable. I'm going to paraphrase it just a little bit. But the parable says something like, once upon a time, there was a river. And living in the river were these little organisms. And they clung to the bank of the river. And the water went to and fro, to and fro. And the organisms just clung for their very life. One day, one of the organisms becomes curious about what's happening downstream and says, perhaps I will let go and see what is down there. And the other organism said, woe unto you who would let go of the river. If you let go, you will be tossed upon the rocks and you will surely die. Well, this one, this curious one, says, if I cling to this rock, surely I will die indeed of boredom, if nothing else. And so he lets go and the water tosses him to and fro and to and fro. And pretty soon when he gets downstream, other organisms look up and point and say, Lo, a Messiah, see how he flies. Jesus isn't the only one upon whom the Spirit of God has fallen. Jesus isn't the only one upon whom the Spirit of God has fallen, saying, You are my child my beloved, and upon whom was conferred the Messiah-ness, the Mashiach-ness, the anointed-ness. Jesus stood in his synagogue, Joseph's boy, perhaps not expected to mount to much except for being a carpenter, and he opened up the ancient scroll of Isaiah and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because I have been anointed to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, to proclaim sight to the blind, and the, and the coming of the day of the Lord for all of the people. Jesus isn't the only anointed, appointed servant of God called to do a good thing in the world. I think there's a book for each of us to open. And somewhere on the page it says, I'm not going to bring about the reign of God unless you get in the game with me. Somewhere in the book it says, you are my beloved and you are fearfully and awesomely, wonderfully made and you've got gifts and you've got to use them. Somewhere in the book it says, it will not become the peaceable reign unless you bring peace. We are the ones we've been waiting for to make it happen. 
oh my God, sometimes it feels like it's so much to do, we might not even know where to get started. We can't see the trees for the forest. We can't find the hope for the despair. We can't see the way through for how crazy it is in the universe. And all we can do is go home and get on our knees and, and maybe cry tears of sorrow at the plight of the world we think we've inhabited. But I'm here to tell you that all of us who believe that we are the body of Christ, we need to start being the body. The body of Christ is you holding the hand of somebody who's suffering. The body of Christ is somebody like Mildred and Richard, whose love forces them to get married, even though it's illegal in 24 states, and who, who write a letter to the, to the attorney general, and, and it goes all the way to the ALCU, and before you know it, the Supreme Court decides that their love is legal. That's what it means to be the body that's anointed. What it means to be the body that's anointed is that we don't delegate justice and peacemaking to anybody else because we know we're the ones we've been waiting for to make it happen. To be the body of Christ that's anointed and appointed is to claim our own messianess and not think it's sacrilegious. To feel God's breath anointing every man, woman, and child to do a little something, something to heal the world. When the little ones don't gossip on the playground, healing the world. Yes. <laughs> when they share with their friends, healing the world. When we share our bread with the hungry and the homeless, healing the world. When we make up with the one we can't stand on a good day, healing the world. <laughs> Trying to make it real. Because I believe we think that God will do the big things and we get to stay cranky town, saucy, resentful, angry, righteously angry, wrapped up, sassy, wrapped up in our anger, wearing it like a proud outfit, like this peach dress. Or we're Christian part-time on a Sunday. Or we can say we're not really Christian, and that exempts us from love. Every human being that has breath in their lungs, every human being that stands upright is created in the image of God, and that means we've got godly work to do. We have to sing it, preach it, shout it, whisper it, write it, gossip about it, blog about it, tweet about it. We make it happen. Don't delegate this work to God. God chooses to do it through us, in us, with us, through us. We do not get to sit by and z-snap and wonder what God's going to do next. Being a faithful person is not a spectacle tater sport. We make it happen. Do your thing. Do your thing.